Boeing built the Super Hornet FA-18EF. FA-18 stands for Fighter and Attack Aircraft, which is why it has the F-A prefix in its name. A Strike Fighter World War II aircraft carrier-based fighter planes, such as the Grumman F-6F Hellcat and the Vought F-4U Corsair, could carry bomb loads as heavy as dive bombers of the day, successfully integrating fighter and attack capabilities into a single aircraft. However, the low power-to-weight ratio of these early planes led the U.S. military to go an alternative path. The carrier planes of the 1950s and 1960s were primarily specialized fighter or attack planes. The size and weight of FA-18s make them challenging to operate. The FA-18 Hornet was the nation's first all-weather fighter and attack aircraft, designed for classic strike applications like interdiction and close air support without sacrificing fighter capabilities. There are a number of different roles in which the FA-18 can be found including those in the Marine Corps, the Navy, and the Marine Corps Reserve. Its lethal ability as a strike fighter was shown early in the Hornet's lifetime during Operation Desert Storm, when the aircraft shot down enemy jets and bombed enemy targets. With each direct hit from a surface-to-air missile and subsequent recovery, swift repair, and another flight the next day, the Hornet proved its sturdiness and survival. The F-A-18 Hornet is still the backbone of tactical aviation for the Marine Corps, and it helps with operations worldwide. The Super Hornet, the F-A-18EF The F-14 Tomcat was phased out of service in favor of the Super Hornet in 1999. Air superiority, fighter escort, reconnaissance, aerial refueling, close air support or CAS, air defense suppression, and precision day-night strikes are all possible with the Super Hornet. New upgrades are now being tested and evaluated, including a better cockpit system, a smaller radar cross-section, and a more advanced networking infrastructure to increase the aircraft's service life and range. This year, Boeing will begin manufacturing 78 new-built F-A-18 Block III Super Hornet fighters after successful testing, and the Navy will get two of the planes by the end of 2020. They are twin-engine, mid-wing, multi-mission, and carrier-ready tactical aircraft that can operate in all weather conditions. As a fighter escort and fleet air defense aircraft, the F-A-18 is primarily used for force projection and close and deep air support in its attack mode. Assault, tactical air control, forward air control, and reconnaissance are all performed by the F-A-18A Plus and CD models, whereas the B-Type is mostly used for training purposes. There have been numerous enhancements to the Hornet's capabilities during its service life. Model C and D production ended with the delivery of the last F-A-18D to the U.S. Marine Corps in the summer of 2000. The United States Navy officially decommissioned the F-A-18C from its combat service in April of this year. McDonnell Douglas first flew the F-A-18E and F Super Hornets in 1995, which is now part of Boeing. There is a difference between the E and the F regarding seating capacity. A secondary benefit of the dual seat variant is that it can be used to train and increase mission capabilities by distributing the burden. Even while the Super Hornet was larger and heavier than the F-A-18 Hornet, it had fewer parts and required less maintenance due to its smaller size and heavier weight. The Block 3 model will feature a 10,000-hour service life increase, a reduced radar signature, and a more advanced cockpit system with large touchscreen displays for better user interface and more powerful computing through the distributed targeting processor network and tactical targeting network technology. Common Tactical Picture, or CTP, is part of the avionics package of Block 3. The F-A-18 Block 3 Super Hornet will undergo intensive testing by the U.S. Navy before it enters into production and active duty. Next Generation Aerial Battle As the United States fights Russia and China for air supremacy, the F-18 Super Hornet flies with three bodyguards. In a series of test flights, Boeing claimed its F-A-18 Super Hornet Block 3 was able to concurrently manage three drones, making it a significant step toward obtaining the faithful wingman capability. According to a Boeing press release, the Distributed Targeting Processor Network, or DTP-N, auxiliary processor of the aircraft was tested in conjunction with a third-party tablet to interact with the UAVs. Boeing built new software packages for the DTP-N to run the tablet and communicate commands. FA-18 pilots used the tablet to enter commands, which the Block 3 hardware processed and transmitted. According to a press statement from the corporation, 
the UAVs carried out the commands of the F-A-18 pilots during the two weeks of testing. Boeing has delivered the first of the 78 F-A-18 Super Hornet fighter jets it has contracted for the U.S. Navy, the company said in a statement. As part of a manned-unmanned teaming experiment, the United States has joined Russia. It is becoming increasingly likely that the countries will engage in a full-scale conflict within the next decade. It is expected that the UCAV's fire control systems would be tested at the Oshiluk 185th Combat Application and Training Center in December 2020, RAA Novosti reported. Still far away from full-fledged use Because of the constant connection between the manned fighter and the unmanned wingmen drones, the sophisticated MUM-T technology can be easily hacked. As a result of the Russian and Chinese military's improved electronic warfare or EW capabilities, wingmen could be cut off from their commanding aircraft if their missiles and radars are constantly blocked. It'll be interesting to see how countries deal with opposing fighter drones after they acquire operational MUM-T systems before the end of this decade. Drones may potentially shoot at other drones, making air battle even more chaotic. But manned fighters would still be able to perform the complicated and aggressive maneuvers necessary to win. Drone operators are unable to operate the aircraft in this manner. Also, AI isn't advanced enough to perform these acrobatics. First, the wingman drones would have to be tested in mild combat scenarios to evaluate how they can fight against enemy radars, weapons delivery, and data linkage with the piloted aircraft. Is it necessary for all drones to be able to communicate with each other? Given the high rate of aircraft damage that could occur in a battle between major powers, will wingmen have to be able to do a little bit of everything? If wingmen share data with ground assets in air-land combat, is the control of drones from a wingman fighter swarm transferable to ground troops? If so, is it possible to get them back? Well, these are some of the questions that need to be answered by the U.S. Air Force. Super Success F-18 Super Hornet operates three unmanned UAVs in successful command flight test, according to Boeing. In a press statement, Boeing Director for Multi-Domain Integration Scott Dixon stated, In order to achieve the Navy's goal of distributed maritime operations, this effective MUM-T demonstration is critical. The proposal highlights the potential of unmanned technologies to broaden and extend the Navy's reach. To run the third-party tablet and communicate commands, Boeing built additional software loads for the DTPN. FA-18 pilots used the tablet to submit commands which Block 3 hardware processed and delivered. According to another statement by Boeing, Block 3 is the most advanced variant of the Super Hornet and exceeds fourth-generation fighter capabilities. Additional capabilities, including enhanced cockpit systems and tools, are provided by Block 3 for the U.S. Navy, according to the announcement. It's a wonderful step forward in supporting our capabilities and readiness goals, Captain Jason Denny, U.S. Navy F-A-18 program manager, said in a statement released. Boeing received a $4 billion deal in March 2020 for 61 single-seat and 17 two-seat Block 3 F-A-18 Super Hornets, with first flight taking place two months later, according to to the announcement. Boeing will continue to provide Block 3 capabilities to the U.S. Navy through the mid-2030s. What do you guys have to say about this U.S. fighter? Tell us in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell icon for any new updates. See you in the next one!